Now it's time for our play, and with Christmas nearly here this afternoon, we have a classic story for all the family about a boy who spends his Christmas holidays in a house where the laughter of children haunts the rooms, and in the garden trees seem to move and the branches whisper to one another. The Children of Green Know by Lucy M. Boston, dramatized for radio by Brian Sibley. With Patricia Routledge as great grandmother and Dominic Childs as Tolly, the children of Green Know. Snip and snap and shape and you, devil's image take on you. Evil grow, evil be. Green Know our demon tree. Longer till I'm there. Oh, isn't it ever gonna let up? We'd be soaked to the skin by the time we get home. I don't mind. I like it. Oh, <laughs> well, at least it's our home rain, not like that dirty London water. Ah,、oh, that's true. I wish I was there now. Is he coming? He is. When will he be here? Soon. How soon? Not long now. And then he'll be with us. Yes, my dears. Then he'll be with us. I never saw so much rain. It just goes on and on. What's your name, son? Maybe it won't ever stop. I was asking what your name was. I've never seen you on this train before. She'll laugh. They always laugh when I tell them my name. Well. Looks like the cat's got his tongue. <laughs> What's your name, lad? Toesland. Toesland. <gasps> That's a real old-fashioned name in these parts. It's Fen Toesland and Toesland Saint Agnes and Toesland Gunning.、Mm-hmm. What's your first name? That's it, Toesland. Do your mum and dad live round here, lad? No, they live in Burma. <sighs> Fancy that now. That's a long way away. Yes. Where are you going then? I'm going to my great grandmother's, Mrs. Oldno, at Green Knower. Why is he coming here? He belongs here, Toby. Why here? Because Linnet, he is my great grandson. Doesn't he have anyone else? Well, his father, of course, but he's all those miles away across the sea. And a mother? No, my darling, she's dead. He has a stepmother, but well, he hardly knows her. And is terribly shy of her. Hasn't he any brothers or sisters? No, but he has us. Will he be happy here? I hope so. Will he see us? If you want him to. Here in the nursery. Maybe. All our things are here: the doll's house, the rocking horse, all our secret treasures. He'll find them, even if he doesn't find us. He'll find you. Or you'll find him, or you'll find each other, here, or in the garden. Is that Master Toesland? Yes, I'm Toesland. Pleased to meet you, Master Toesland. I knew your mother when she was your size. I bet you were wondering how we were going to get you to Green Knower. I thought I was going to have to swim. Right now, Master Toesland. Take the lantern right, right,、yeah. and kneel up in the bows, and be sure to shout out if we're set to bump into anything. Hold tight now. Off we go. Can you see the boat? I can see the lantern light bobbing on the water. But can you see him? Toesland, you mean? He'll be in the boat with Bogus, won't he? Yes. He is. The boat's almost at the steps. He's here. He is. And I must go to meet him. Are we here? There we are. You mind your step as you get out, Master Towson. We've got you this far without you falling in. We don't want any last-minute mishaps. 
I'll be careful. Uh, I'll just tie her up and then I'll show you in. I'd like to see Mrs. Old Nose Face when she sees you. What will he make of Green Noah? I've lived here so long. I no longer see what he'll see with his young eyes. These old, old walls, plastered here, rough stone there. All these mirrors filling the place with reflections and corners and spaces that aren't really there. The candlelight and all these pictures and paintings. And the other pictures only glimpsed back to front in the mirrors. What will he make of Green Noah? What will he make of us? This way. It's like a castle. Hi. Oh, look. Up there. What's that you've seen? Children. Hey. Oh, you mean the carvings on the beam ends? They're children. As like as not. Children with wings. They look as if they're laughing. Oh, well, maybe they are. <laughs> now, your great-grandmother will be in here. Come in. In you go. So, you've come back. Why did you say come back? I wondered whose face it would be of all the faces I knew. They always come back. You are like another Toesland. Your grandfather. What a good thing you have the right name. Because I should always be calling you Tolly anyway. Tolly? I used to call him Tolly. Have you got a pet name? I'm sure they don't call you Toesland at school. I get called Towser. Here we're all used to Toesland. It's the family name and doesn't seem queer to us. Do you mind, Tolly? I like it. It's what my mother used to call me. What shall I call you? Granny. What does one generation more or less matter? I'm glad you've come. I came in a boat with a lantern. I know. You're looking at the fire. What are you thinking, Tolly? I was wondering, are these our flames? I mean, are they our own? The blue ones are yours and the orange ones are mine. And the candle flames? All yours. Is it my house? I mean, partly. Of course it is. Partly, as you say. Well, now that you're here, what shall we do first? Are you hungry? I'm rather hungry. It's a long time since I've made tea for a young boy, so I hope I've got it right. Sandwiches, two sorts, egg and chicken, iced orange cake, jelly and chocolate finger biscuits. Will that do? Yes, thank you. Good. Well, let's eat. And afterwards, I'll show you round your house. Why do you live in a castle, Granny? Castles were meant to live in. I thought it was only in fairy tales. What do you make of this room, Tolly? It looks like a knight's hall. So it does. And maybe it was once. Now it's known as the music room. Tomorrow you can explore the inside of the house up and down, and learn your way about and to feel at home in it. Because you won't be able to go outside until the floods go down. And 
now you must come and see your own room. Granny, is this a real castle? Of course. I mean, do things happen in it? Like the castles in books? Oh, yes, things happen in it. What sort of things? Wait and see. I'm waiting, too, to see what happens now that you are here. Something will, I'm sure. Come along. One more flight of stairs. This room up here, right under the roof, has always been the nursery at Green Noor. Here's your bed, and you can keep your things in this chest of drawers. The two dogs standing on top are made of china. And what's that little thing between them? This? It's a little mouse carved out of ebony. Who does it belong to? Oh, someone else. From long ago? <laughs> then and now. And this wicker bird cage? It wasn't always empty. There was a little bird in it once. Tweet, tweet. Come along, my pretty. But not for many years now. What about this red box with all the patterns on it? Ah, the key, I'm afraid, is lost. I don't know what's in it. It used to be a toy box. And the rocking horse? <laughs> he's a handsome beast, isn't he? And he's one of the old sort on rockers. A horse you can ride hard enough to make him rear and kick. His mane is so soft. Real horse hair, like his tail. Black and soft and long. On, boy! Faster! Faster! What about this? The doll's house. Open it up. Oh, it's a model of this house. Yes. <laughs> here's the night's hall. Yes. And here's the stairs. That's right. And here's my room. Yes. Here's the rocking horse. And here's the red box. And here's the tiny bird cage. But there are four beds. Are there sometimes other children here? Sometimes. Who are they? You'll see them when they come, if they come. When do they come? When they like. Now, it's high time you were in bed. Can I have the mouse in bed? Toby's Japanese mouse, yes. Here you are. Who's Toby? Well, really, another Toesland. Toby for short. Now, sleep well. I light the night light for you. Oh, the clock's not going. My room is underneath yours, so you can knock on the floor if you want me. There. Now, good night. Good night, Granny. Good night, Mouse. <laughs> Must be the rocking horse. <laughs> it's not moving. Can't have been the rocking horse. Must have been a dream. Just a dream. That's what it was. Wasn't it, Mouse? It's a beautiful sunny day, and the view. Just look at it. You see that line of willow trees? Yes. Well, that's where the river runs when all this other water isn't around. Granny, this rocking horse... Yes, Tolly? Last night, when I was lying in bed with my eyes shut, I could hear the horse going creak-croak, just like this. But when I opened my eyes... 
It was quite still. And did the mouse squeak under your pillow? I don't think so. Does it? Sometimes. <laughs> you seem ready for anything, that's something. Now get dressed and come down to breakfast. More toast? Thank you. You're looking at the portrait over the fireplace. I didn't notice it last night. Firelight and shadows. Tell me what you see. There are two ladies and three children. Two boys dressed in dark green suits. Green silk with lace collars. They have long hair. And one of them is wearing a sword mm -hmm. and has his hand on the collar of a deer. A tame deer. The other boy... His brother? ...has a book under his arm and something in his hand. A musical instrument. It's a flute. The girl... Their sister? ...is smiling. And she's holding a little bird. It's a chaffinch. And beside her, on the ground, is an open birdcage. Mm -hmm. And do you notice their eyes? They're large and dark and... and... Yes, Tommy? They're all looking at me. <laughs> I'm not surprised. You have only just come. They must be tired of looking at me. Who are they? The old nose. Your family. The boy with the deer is... Toby. Toby. And Toby is 14. Is that a real sword he's wearing? Yes, of course. Why? Because he's going to be a soldier. His father gave it to him when he was 13. And the younger boy with the flute is... Alexander. Alexander. Is Alexander going to be a musician? He wants to be a poet. And the little girl? The little girl is... Linnet. My little Linnet. My mother was called Linnet. This Linnet is six years old. And the lady in the blue dress is their mother. And that's you behind them? No. It's their grandmother, Mrs. Old No. Is this their house? Yes. They lived here. When did they live here? Oh, a long time ago. Oh, I've just realised. The cage on the ground, beside Linnet, it's the bird cage in my room. It is, isn't it? <laughs> yes. And is the doll's house Linnet's? No, the doll's house was mine when I was a little girl. Did you have brothers and sisters? No, but I played that I had. I was lonely. That's why I put four beds in the doll's house. Did you pretend that they were your brothers and sisters? Yes, my dear. How did you know? Because I think that is what I shall do. Good. Can I go and play now? Of course. With the rocking horse? You can play with anything you like if you are careful. And can I take some sugar for the horse? Yes. <laughs> Where will you ride to today? To see Toby, Alexander and Linnet. Do you know the way? Horses always know the way. Faster, boy, faster. Oh, I do wish you were a real horse. What's that? Oh! A little bird, tapping at the window. Hello there. Want to come in? Straight to Linnet's cage. Where are you going now? <laughs> Not on my head. I don't like that. I can't see you. You don't have to go. Oh, come back, Chaffinch. 
What would bring him back? What did Linnet used to put in the cage? Chaffinch? Chaffinch? Gone. Hello, Mr. Boggus. Hey. Have you come in the boat? I came in my waders. The water's going down lovely. I haven't got any waders. I know, Master Tosley. Which is why I borrowed these here Wellingtons from my niece's lad. Thank you, Mr. Boggus. Well, you'd best put them on, Toby. Right. <laughs> Granny, you called me Toby. Why, so I did. <laughs> I was forgetting. <laughs> Wood, Mr. Bogus. Logs for your great grandmother's fire, Master Tozen. Nothing quite like a log fire roaring away up the chimney. <laughs> but they eat up logs the way a boy eats up breakfast. <laughs> What's down there? Where you throw the logs? Those are the old stables. Where the horses used to live? Certainly. They look very grand rooms for horses. <laughs> Were they very special horses? Oh, oh, they were fine horses when I was a lad. Shining like the sun and dressed up like lords. I've never had an overcoat like they had. When they were led out, striking sparks out of the cobbles with their hooves and shaking the bridles, they were a proper eyeful. Oh, your grandfather, Mr. Toesland as was, he was a rare one with a horse. He could make them do anything just by breathing secrets into their ears. <sighs> There's a table and a chair down there with a teapot and mug. Aye. Is that where you live, Mr. Boggus? Oh. Depends what you call living. When I'm awake, I'm mostly here, but when I go home, I mostly sleeps. How long have you been here? Fifty-five years. I came here when I was twelve. But, of course, I knew it before that, because my father worked here. Same as me. Can I go down and look around? Of course you can, young master. <laughs> yeah, but watch your footing on that ladder. And watch out for their hooves. If a horse treads on you, you won't forget it in a hurry, I can tell you. still smell them. I wish there were still horses here. If only I thought hard enough, then maybe... Hello there. Master Towson, where are you? I'm here. Were you looking for Master Toby's horse by any chance? That stall's always kept empty. In case he feels like spending a night there. Folks say it's haunted, and that you can hear him at night whinnying for his young master. Have you ever heard him whinnying? Uh, I tells you, I sleeps at home. That's where I dreams. What's this for? This iron basket thing? That's the manger, of course, where they put the hay for the horses. But you haven't put any hay for him. Ghosts don't eat hay. But they might like to pretend. <laughs> What's this? Under here. A piece of old wood. Covered in patterns. Red and white. Letters, I think. All spiky looking. I can't read them. Oh, my wonderful fest day. Mr. Boggus! Look what I found. Now then, don't you take away nothing you find here. I won't. I promise. Mr. Boggis, what was the name of Master Toby's horse? The special one. Name? I can't remember. But I seem to recall that he was as fine a horse as you could wish for. And once, when Master Toby had to ride for the doctor to attend Miss Linnet, they say as how that horse saved his life. How? Oh. Well, I forget the story, but Mrs. Olden I will remember all right. Of that you can be certain sure. 
This afternoon, Granny, in the stables, I found a funny board with patterns and writing on it. It looked like a name, but I couldn't read it. It was funny writing. It was a name. Feste. Oh, my wonderful Feste! My golden eagle! My powerful otter! My wise horse! Toby's horse was called Feste. When the stables were built, each horse had its name above the manger. Alexander had a white pony called Bucephalus, and Toby had Feste. How did Feste save Toby's life? Oh, not just Toby's life, but Linnet's too, for she was very ill with fever and would have died if Toby had not said that he would ride for the doctor. Mother, he said, let me go. Mother, you Mother, must. you must. You really must let me go before it is too late. But my dear boy, it is growing dark, and who knows how the water is rising? Best they can see in the dark, Mother. And the dark does not frighten me. Then the grandmother spoke. Toby is right. Toby is right. Let him go. Feste will look after him. He will. I know he will. Very well. Go quickly, Toby, but take care. Go the shortest way, over the wooden bridge and up the hill. Tell the doctor to make haste. It was not dark yet. The sky was dim green, and shallow water was over the roads. Away they cantered, the mud flying up around them. On and on until they came to the wooden bridge. The current heaved and pushed, but the bridge was still well above the water. Toby pulled Feste to a walking pace. Now you must understand that Feste had crossed this bridge hundreds of times before, but this time, no. Feste the obedient would not cross. He would not go on. Toby talked Steady, to him. Steady, Feste. Over we go. He coaxed him. Come on, boy. Cross the bridge. He scolded him. Feste, what ails you? He pulled Feste's head round to face the bridge again and again. Come on, Feste. We have to cross the bridge. But all in vain. At last, for the first time in his life, he lifted his whip and lashed the horse. Get on! Do you hear me? I'll whip you till you do cross this bridge. Linnet's life depends on it. Now get on with you. But Feste reared up and struck the air with outstretched forefeet, so that it was all Toby could do to hang on in the saddle. What happened then? Then, when Feste had shown his strength and his angry pride, he came down from his prancing and, without warning, leapt the high hedge at the side of the lane. Ah! He slithered down the river bank with his forefeet stuck out before him and plunged into the cold, ugly river and began to swim. And what about Toby? Toby could feel the powerful water buffeting and shoving him on the upstream side and dragging and snatching at him on the other. Hold on, Feste. You must get to the other side. It was as though the river were determined to separate him from Feste. Did it? Toby could feel that the horse was striking out for his life. His ears were straining forward and his eyes too, so that Toby could see the whites. But Feste looked after Toby, didn't he? Yes. They reached the farther bank only a few yards upstream from the bridge and scrambled up on the other side. At the top of the bank, he stood with heaving sides and trembling shoulders, shaking his heavy wet mane and hanging his Best head. Day, you mad, crazy horse! Whatever possessed you to do that? Suddenly there came a crack, like cannon fire. The wooden bridge twisted and cockled before Toby's eyes, collapsed and was swept in a tangled mass downstream. Then Feste reared up, and they were off again together at full gallop up the hill in the fading light. Feste chose his own way, jumping fences and hedges, sloshing through the mud, and when he reached the village at last, he rattled down the cobbled streets until he stopped at the doctor's house. Oh, my wonderful Feste, my golden eagle, my powerful otter, my wise horse. They fetched the doctor home just in time.
And did Linnet get better? Thanks to Toby and Feste. Granny, is my bedroom too far away to hear Feste neigh and whinny? No, I don't think it's too far away. Did you hear him when you were little? Oh, yes. I heard him. Generally at sunset. There were other horses then, of course, but I could always tell Feste's voice. It is quite individual. I did a silly thing. I put a lump of sugar out for him. That wasn't silly at all, my dear. Tell me more about the children, please. And their father. Why isn't he there, in the picture? He was a ship's captain. Captain Old Nose sailed all over the world. He used to bring home presents for the family. From one journey, he brought the mouse for Toby, your mouse. Granny, why is it called Green Noah? Snip it, snap it, shape and you. Devil's image, take on you. Evil grow, evil be, green Noah demon tree. For someone who's lived here always, you ask a lot of questions. I know, Granny, but tell me, please. Green Noah demon tree, evil fingers can't catch me. Green Noah is not the real name. It used to be called Green No, but it... Well, it was changed a long time ago. Won't you tell me? One day. Granny? More questions. About Feste? Ah, yes. Feste. What colour was he? He was chestnut with a white nose and four white feet. Toby and he loved each other more than anything on earth. But the deer was Toby's too? Yes. A deer seems more magic than a horse. Tell me about the deer, Granny. One day. Oh, when does one day come? Ah, first there is tomorrow. And that's another day. But now it's time for you to get some sleep. Sleep? I can't possibly go to sleep. The moonlight's too bright. Makes everything shiny. The china dogs. And the rocking horse's eye. Mouse's eye, too. Are you sleepy, Mouse? It's all right for you. You can burrow your way under the pillow so you don't see the moonlight. Can't sleep with so much to think about. Why is it called Green Noah? Do you know, Mouse? <laughs> Who's there? Evil Crow, Evil Bee, Green Noah, Demon Tree. Green Noah, Demon Tree, Evil Fingers Can't Catch Me. <laughs> Gone again. <laughs> Linnet, where are you? Come out into the moonlight. <laughs> Are you just teasing me? <laughs> one day I'll see you. One day. When does one day come? <laughs> <laughs> it's time to get up. Look, the floods have all gone in the night. Come and see. Now, where shall I go first? <laughs> <laughs> this way? Or this way? I think I'll go this way. See, I knew he'd come to the secret place. Of course, we often play there. I didn't know about this part of the house before. It's all in ruins. It's all overgrown with ferns and ivy growing right out of the cracks between the stones. And I know who brought him here. The saint. What's this? He's seen him. But he's looking down instead of up. 
It's a carving. Stone fishes swimming about in stone water. Behind the fishes, two big bare stone feet with stone ripples round the ankles, as if he was paddling. Look up, Tolly. A great stone man wading through the water. Look up. And there's something, someone on his shoulders. A child. Who can they be? The statue looks so friendly, almost alive. <laughs> I love it. I don't quite know why, but I do. Found the old saint of you, Master Tosland. Who is he, Mr. Boggus? Why, our very own St. Christopher. These ruins are where his chapel stood till hundreds of years ago now. Some fool took it in his stupid head to knock the place down and more or less succeeded. But the old saint survived, as he should, being a saint. You know the old story, of course? No. Well, there was a storm, and St. Christopher, they say, offered to carry the young Jesus, that's him, sitting on the old man's shoulders, across the river that was in full flood. His only little child thought the saint, he'd be easy enough to carry. Wasn't he? Oh, when St. Christopher was halfway across, when the river was foaming and swirling and churning round his legs and trying to sweep him off into the flood, he began to feel that the child was getting heavy, as heavy as the sorrow of the whole world. Ah, Linnet always loved St. Christopher. Always liked to play here. Which Linnet, Mr. Boggus? Do you mean Toby's sister or my mother? Uh, both of them, I shouldn't wonder. And the other one? Which other one? Well, you'll find out. Now you should be off exploring. Thank you for the story, Mr. Boggus. Which way should I go? Any way you like. This way. Quick. This way. Come. This way. Hurry. This way. Follow. Here, Tolly. Come into the woods. Oh! It's a deer. <laughs> it's green. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bush. A bush shaped like a deer. Brown bush stalk legs growing out of the ground. It's like Toby's deer in the picture. This is. It feels so alive. It does. It's wild. It's magic. Yes, it is. There's a green squirrel, too. And here, along this path, see? A green peacock, all leaves instead of feathers. And through there, down by the water, look! <laughs> a green hair. What else? This way. Hurry. Come along, Tolly. <sighs> Two bird-shaped trees. A cock and a hen. And just a lawn. Nothing else? <laughs> <laughs> of course. It's hide and seek. Toby? Linnet? Alexander? Shall we play? Shall we? The green deer is den. <laughs> <laughs> Granny. Hello, Tolly. What are you playing? Hide and seek. Well, you found me. <laughs> if it was me you were looking for. I was playing with them. Ah. Did they play hide-and-seek with you? Oh, yes. Oh. What's this in your hair, Tolly? A twig. Yes. Except... Yes? I don't think it can have fallen off any of the trees. Why did you say that? It looks as if it's been cut like this, to make it this shape. Like a letter, T. A perfect T for Tolly. Somebody's been teasing you. When I was little, I used to find a twig, L, in my lap. Why L? Well, you see, my Christian name is Linnet. So you are the other one. The other one? The other Linnet. It's something Boggus said. <laughs> so tell me, what have you seen this morning? 
I've seen the green deer and all the other green things. Oh, which have you seen? The deer and the squirrel and the peacock and the hare and the two birds. The cock and the hen. Who made all the green animals? Boggis's grandfather. Tolly, do you see the sky? The colour? Yes. It's dark. Yes, and there's a queer light. And no wind. Oh, and it's turned very cold suddenly. Granny? Yes, my dear? You remember how I took some sugar for the rocking horse? Yes. Well, yesterday I went to the stables and put some sugar in Feste's stall, just in case. And this morning, the sugar had gone. <laughs> Perhaps Boggis took it for his tea. Do you think so? I thought Feste took it. Well, perhaps he did. And what else have you seen today? The Great Stone Man. Oh, St Christopher. Then you visited Linnet's favourite part of the garden. Which Linnet? Whichever Linnet you happen to find there. Oh, Tolly, look. A snowflake. It's starting to snow. Oh, yes. Yeah. Here it comes. Look at them all, dancing on the air. Ooh, it's getting heavy. Let's get indoors. I used to think that when it snowed, it was like millions of tiny white birds circling home to roost. What will the real birds do? Oh, they don't mind the snow, so long as we feed them. Is your window open enough for the chaffinch to get in? You must take some short bread. And make him welcome. Here you are, little chaffinch. A whole biscuit, all broken up for you. <sighs> but will he come for it? The shadow horse goes much faster than the real rocking horse, leaping ahead as if it's going to leap out of the room. Perhaps it really is Feste. Oh, my wonderful Feste. My golden eagle. My wise horse. Toby? <laughs> Where are you? Wait for me! I see them. In the mirror, Linnet, Alexander, <laughs> I spy. <laughs> no, don't go. They're gone again. I saw them in the mirror, in the hall. Granny, do you ever see them? Not always. At the very beginning, I saw them sometimes. Like you did, in mirrors. I only saw Alexander and Linnet, not Toby. Toby is always hard to find, because he's often with Feste. Did you ever see Feste? No, never. But my grandfather told me he did sometimes. Was his name Toesland too? Yes, my dear, it was. He was the first one to tell me stories about Toby and Feste, and then, afterwards, I used to hear them talking. Tolly, make up a great blaze, and let's blow out the candles and sit and talk by firelight. Can you tell me about the stone man in the garden, please? St. Christopher... There is always a St. Christopher by an old ford like the one that crosses the river. Did something happen there once? Yes. How did you know? It was on a night long, long ago. It was Christmas Eve and Toby and Alexander had gone with Mother to Midnight Mass at the big church in Penny Soakey across the river. They said I was too young to walk so far. So I was put to bed. Grandmother was downstairs. I was upstairs in the nursery. With Orlando. Orlando? A little black and white curly dog. I lay there, listening. A fox barked, and then I heard... Something strange. 
What was it? Outside, on the ice-hard ground, there were footsteps that couldn't be anything or anybody that she knew. Not Boggess's hobnail boots. Not her grandmother. Was she frightened? No. No. She was simply certain that it did not belong to the everyday world. Orlando woke up and listened. I could feel his tail softly beating against my ribs. She got out of bed, opened the window and leant out. Orlando stood beside me with his paws on the windowsill. The wind was like a knife against her cheek. I heard the steps, heavy but soft. Out into the moonlight came St. Christopher. Christopher. Huge and gentle. Gave a little soft bark. From the stables came a quiet whinny. The birds in the trees woke up and flew around the stone giants. Then he strode across the lawns with his bare feet and came to the river. At the edge, there was thin, loose ice that shivered like a window pane as he stepped in. The water rushed round his legs, and the reflection of the moon was torn to wet ribbons. The stream crept up to his waist. And when he looked as if he could go no further, Linnet heard a child's voice singing gaily. I would my true love did so chance to see the legends of my play to call my true love to the dance. As the child sang, it clutched St. Christopher by the hair to hold him firmly. St. Christopher felt his way carefully, foot by foot, through the deepest part and came out safely on the other side. I watched him striding away across the meadows until he was out of sight and I went back to bed. When the boys returned from church, Leonard told them what she had seen. Alexander had seen St. Christopher too, kneeling among the tombstones outside the church, under a big cypress tree. Of course, we rushed out first thing in the morning to look. And we found St. Christopher in his place as usual, with icicles all over him. But the sun was falling on the stone child, and the hand that it held up was rosy pink in the sunlight. Tomorrow shall be my dancing day, I would my true love did so chance to see. Don't be sad, my dear. They are like shy animals. They don't come just at first. They don't come until they are sure. Toesland, listen. Listen. Do you hear what I hear? Is it him? Oh. Is it Feste? Yes, I think so. Toby and Feste are together. You'll find them soon, all of them. You must just be patient. Oh, the chaffinch. You've come for the biscuit. What have you got there? What have you found? What is it? Let me see, just a piece of old string. What is it? Ah, a key. An old key. I know, the toy box. Yes! Granny! Granny! Come and see what I found. Come quickly. All right, Tolly. I'm coming. Still snowing. Is that why you came in at last, little bird? Well, what have you found? The key. To the toy box, see? Shall we open it now? Yes. Together now. Lift the lid. Oh. What is it? This leather case. Can you guess what's inside? Oh, is 
it? Yes. Alexander's flute. Oh, Tolly, will you learn to play it? If I can, will I be able to, do you think? Alexander learned. Where did he get the flute? It was a very special present. A, a royal, royal present. present. From the king himself. King Charles the Second, who was king when Alexander and the others were here. The king? The children had gone with their parents to visit friends at Great Church, where everyone was talking about only one thing, a coming visit from His Majesty the King. They went to see the church, and which was even then famous for its music and fine stained glass. And somehow, Alexander became separated from the others. How could they have gone so soon? How could they indeed? The candles wept wax, and their golden flames danced in the air. I held my breath, listening. No sound. Only the droning of wind passing along the distant vaulting. Like the sound in a shell. And then Alexander, who had a beautiful voice, suddenly wanted to... Sing! To send his voice away up there and hear what nestling echoes it would brush off the roof. And I sang. I call, I call, I call, Gabriel, Gabriel, Gabriel. Would the archangel hear? Would he come? Did he? No, but someone did. Popping out of the organ loft, a jack-in-the-box of a man with a pointed red beard and a bald head like a marble. Boy! Boy! Stay there all your life! And that is how Alexander and his voice... What a voice! ...were discovered. The most astonishing voice. I will take no refusal. This boy must sing. He must sing before the king. Before the king of England. Did the king like it? When the performance was at an end, the king called Alexander to him. I walked towards his majesty and dropped onto one knee. The king, who had a long, sad face and melancholy eyes, looked at him thoughtfully. You have given us and our companions some delight, and we should wish to give you some token of it. Have you any boy's wish that your king might grant? And Alexander replied, Your majesty, I would like a flute. A flute? You shall have it, Sirrah. It was well sung. And that is how Alexander got his flute. Here. Try this box. Dominoes! Oh, ivory and ebony. Whose were they? They all played with them. A marble! Where did that come from? I wonder. Granny, it's warm. <laughs> Look, Tolly, the dominoes. What's happening? Someone's standing them all up, on end, in a line. Is it them? That's Alexander. Leonard never could do it right. The line's curving round and round. Their grandmother taught them this game. What game? You'll see. <laughs> when the last domino has been stood on end, you give it a little tap and all the dominoes fall. One after another. <laughs> Aren't they funny? <laughs> the way they play tricks on me. They like to make us smile. I'm going to look at their books. Which one? Linnet's book. The Fables. Aesop. Good. Don't be long. I'm sure you want to get out into that snow. I know some of these stories. Ah, Linnet's favourite. The ass in the lion skin. Oh, oh, is that you, Linnet? I can feel you're here. Feel your hands over my eyes. I'm sure it's you, isn't it? <laughs> I knew it was. Why won't you let me see you? Hurry up, Tolly. Breakfast. And snow. <laughs> I can see my breathing. 
Morning, Master Talisman. Oh. You going to leave great big footprints all over that nice new snow? I can't walk without leaving marks. I never walk through any part of the garden that can be seen from the house. Mrs. Old knows terrible particular about it. Bogus, she says. Don't you go sweeping paths and such like. I love it like it is. Untouched. I'll be very careful. I won't mess it just here. I'll go round by the wall and keep out of sight. Very good, Master Towsland. You enjoy yourself. Thank you. <sighs> just the right age for snow. I hardly recognise anywhere. Never seen that tree before. Like a huge man. A snowman. A snowman, but without any eyes. Evil grow, evil be. Green Noah, demon tree. Everything is so different. Where's the green deer? What's that? Oh! Footprints. Tiny pointed ones. Running. The deer. Running towards that tree. <laughs> <laughs> its branches are right down to the ground of snow like a tent they're here Alexander playing his flute and there's the squirrel in his pocket you silly creature are you looking for nuts you won't find any there Toby's feeding the deer. Yeah, that's right. Is that good? Look at all that hope in it. He wants to dance as well. So many tame creatures with them. Oh, that confounded peacock! No more music now. Nothing but crying. We might just as well go now. No! They've gone. gone. They were gone. But you have seen them now. All three of them. Yes, under the tree. That's because of the deer. It always goes there when the snow is deep. It's a wonderful snow house. Yes. I used to say it was like being in heaven and playing in the clouds. Granny, about the flute. Yes. Well, I've got it here. But Alexander had it. I saw him playing it. How can there be two of it? The one he has now is part of him. This one is the one he used to have. No, Granny. This is Alexander's flute. It's the real one. Listen. That's what Alexander was playing to the birds. How clever of you to remember the tune. I didn't. I only blew. It's as if the tune played itself. Well, well, well. There you are, Tolly. Let's have some lunch and then you can go out again. And I have to go to the stables too. To leave some sugar. For fest day. Of course. You've been visiting that stall again, Master Towsland? Fest day stall. If that was his name, I forget. You join me in a cup of tea, young sir. Thank you. And have you, uh, by any chance, seen Master Toby's horse yet? Not yet, Mr. Boggis. Well, patience, they say, is often rewarded, as I used to tell your mother. Tell me about my mother, Mr. Boggis. Your mother was a proper caution. <laughs> Many a time she made me laugh and did say such things. I do still remember her. Well, hey, drink up, Master Towsland. Or do you like sugar in it? Do you have any sugar, Mr. Boggus? Afraid not. Never touch stuff. Do you? No, 
I just wondered. Mm. Where's that gone? I saw it yesterday. What are you looking for? Mm. An old magazine. Years old now. I thought you might be interested. Uh. Ah, here we are. <laughs> or should I say here and there, since that's what it's called. Uh, now then. Ah. Holmes, the Crusaders left behind. All about green now it is. History and everything. And pictures too. Some unusual to to topiary. It's all the green animals. The deer and the squirrel. They're all there. Tells you how my grandfather shaped them out of the yew trees. Can I borrow this, please? Of course you can. Thank you, Mr. Boggus. I'll take great care of it. You haven't finished your tea. Youngsters. Will they come again? To the snow house? Perhaps if I play Alexander's flute. Are you here on your own? Why, yes. But where is your mother? Why, in heaven, of course. Hold still, squirrel. I want to try my bracelet on you. Did you make the snowman? Snowman? An enormous snowman with no eyes. Over there, I mean. Among the trees. As big as St. Christopher. He means Green Noah. Don't go near Green Noah. He's eyeless and horrible. I dance round him and I sing. Green Noah, demon tree, evil fingers can't catch me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness for the peacock. It's the only thing that confounded bird is good for. It always gives warning if Green Noah moves. Green Noah, demon tree, evil fingers can't catch me. Linnet, where have you gone? Toby? Don't leave me again. Alexander? Were they really here? Yes. They always leave something. Lynette's bracelet. Oh, my own dear little Lynette. You found her bracelet. She put it round the squirrel's neck. She would, of course. I might have thought of that. It was a present from her granny on her sixth birthday. May I have it? I know you found it, but I would like to keep it. Yes, of course you can keep it. Thank you, Tolly. I think I'll go and read for a while before bed. Good. Perhaps the most unusual and romantic of the topiary creations in this garden is that of the green Noah. The green Noah is a tree which now gives its name to the estate on which it stands, though the original name is Green Noah. The story about it has been told many times. It seems that an old gardener called Bogus first shaped the various animals and later added a figure of Noah. When Noah was a few years old, a gypsy and a notorious witch known as Old Petronella broke into the gardens during an eclipse of the moon and, with horrible dancing and laughter, laid a curse on the green Noah. Snip it, snap it, shape and you, devil's image take on you. Evil grow, evil be, green Noah demon tree. As the tree grew, a series of unexplained accidents overtook the men of the family, in every case due to shying or bolting horses. According to the villagers, the horses panicked because of a blind figure that prowled by night. Don't go near him, he's eyeless and horrible. Some say old Petronella herself was caught by him in the end. Before long, the name of Green Noah was forgotten, the people insisting on calling it Green Noah. I made up a rhyme to tease him. 
I dance round him and I sing. Green over demon tree, evil fingers can't catch me. This photograph is at least thirty years old, as for a long time nobody has been willing to trim the old gentleman. Thank goodness for the peacock. It's the only thing that confounded bird is good for. It always gives warning if Green Noah moves. Not in bed yet, darling. I looked outside a little while ago, and I'm afraid the snow is melting, Tolly. By morning, most of the whiteness will be gone, and we'll be Green Noah again. Now, what have you been reading? Bogus gave it to me. Ah, the story of Green Noah. I didn't want to tell you in case it frightened you. But we leave Green Noah alone. Take no notice of him. He's growing into quite an ordinary tree. The curse is very old, and I suppose it doesn't last forever. I only saw it this morning. I never noticed it before. It's so wild and uncut. Only it made the shape of a snowman. I know. I thought it didn't have any eyes because no one could reach to put in any pieces of coal. Don't think about him, Tolly. St. Christopher is much more important to us. Linnet's not afraid of him. She made up a rhyme. Green Noah, demon tree, evil fingers can't catch me. <laughs> Into bed now. The little chaffinch is asleep, see? Do you want the mouse? Please. There. By the way, is the mouse behaving? Not bad. See you in the morning. Mouse. Mouse, be magicked. Mouse. Mouse. Come alive. Come alive. More toast, Tolly. Thank you. What are you going to do today? Granny? Yes, dear? Who decorates the Christmas tree? You and I do. We'll do it tomorrow. Shall we hang presents for the birds? I mean, coconuts, peanuts and things. Yes, we will, for Christmas Day. Outside on the yew tree where you saw Toby, Leonard, and Alexander. And we'll put out hazelnuts for the squirrels and biscuits on the ground for the robins and the blackbirds. Can I go out and play? Of course. Any particular game today? Now he's not a snowman anymore. I want to see Green Noah. All right. But do listen out for the cry of the peacock, won't you? Here he is. Snippet, snap it, That's why I never recognized him before. Snippet, snap it, snippet, snap it, snippet, snap it. He's all ragged and overgrown. Snippet, snap it, shapen you. Which I can see now. Square shoulders. Flat bowl hat. Snip it, snap it, snip it, snap it, shape a new. That's Mr. Noah. But those long, long arms and fingers open. Snip it, snap it, shape a new. Devil's image take on you. Ready to grab. Catch me. Evil grow, evil be. Green Noah, demon tree. Snip it, snap it, snip it, stab it, snip it, snap it. Sing with me, Tolly, sing. Green old demon tree, evil fingers can't catch me. <laughs> oh, Mr. Bogus, it's uh, you. Who were you expecting? Green now himself. Do you know the story? Oh, my grandfather used to tell me the story when I was a young'un. Now then. Tell me, Mr. Bogus. Tell me about the witch. Oh, Petronella. She was a bad and all right. 
Notorious, you might say. Why did she do it? Curse the green Noah tree? Mm, well, no. It happened that the famous horse thief, Black Ferdy, he was called, was caught red-handed in the stables of Green No and came up for trial. Now, as it happened, Mr. Old No, who were living here then, turned out to be the judge. So, of course, he weren't going to be easy on someone as had tried to steal one of his best horses. What happened? Well, Black Ferdy was condemned for his crime. And after lying in Newgate Prison for some years, he was deported to Botany Bay in Australia. What's that got to do with Petronella? I was coming to that. She was Black Ferdy's mother. And she was determined to get even with Mr. Oldnow for what he'd done to her son. And so, as the story goes, she worked her black magic and laid a terrible curse on poor old Green Noah. There are those who say that tree can move. Have you seen him move, Mr. Boggis? No, I'm glad to say. Nor do I want to. Now, Master Towsland, if you give me a hand with this holly and ivy... Yes. ...and I'll fetch the Christmas tree in, and when you and Mrs. Old now are ready, you can start the decorating. Come on, then. Let's have another ornament for this side of the tree. This one's a glass bell. Pretty. And what's this one? A silver star. Oh, let's put that one on the top. I was thinking, Tolly, that I might take you to Midnight Mass tomorrow, if you would like to come, if the weather is good. It's a long walk. Do you know, I, I thought I heard thunder a minute ago. Who ever heard of thunderstorms at Christmas? What have you there? A golden fur cone. Oh, yes, I'd forgotten that one. Did you have these decorations when you were a little girl? Oh, yes, like me. They're very old and rather fragile. Now then, Tolly, pass me another holly branch. The mantelpiece looks a bit lopsided. Mind the prickles. Did they do this? Yes, they always decorated the house, but they didn't have a Christmas tree. That began much later in England, at any rate. Shh. Tolly, listen. Lulu, Lula, thou little tiny child. Bye bye, Luli, Luli. Oh, sisters, too, how may we do for to preserve this day, this poor youngling? For whom we sing Bye-bye, Luli, Luli Who is it? It's the grandmother rocking the cradle. Why are you crying, Granny? It's lovely. It is lovely. Only it's such a long time ago. I don't know why that should be sad, but it sometimes seems so. Granny, whose cradle is it? Linnet is as big as I am. My darling, this voice is much older than that. I hardly know whose it is. I heard it once before at Christmas. Do you know, I really do believe that is thunder. Open the door, Tolly, and listen. No? I can't hear it. Granny, I've just remembered. I haven't put any sugar for fest day. Can I take the flashlight and go out with some before I go to bed? I might just see him tonight. You know you really should change your name to Hopeful. <laughs> <laughs> Tell Boggis I need to see him before he goes home for the night. And shut the door after you. It's cold. The dog. This torch isn't much good. Thunder! 
Granny was right. I must get to the stables, quick. The peacock! It's the only thing that confounded bird is good for. It always gives warning if Green Noah moves. Green Noah! Keep away from him. I'm not afraid of him. He can't hurt me. I didn't mean you. I mean him. Don't go near him. He's eyeless. He's horrible. Better get back. Torch is going. Gone. Can't see. Keep away from him. Snippets, puppets, shaven you. Don't go near him. Devil's image take on you. Keep away from him. Evil grow, evil be. He's eyeless and horrible. Green Noah, demon tree. If he can't see me, how can he find me? Keep away from him. Keep away from me. Green Noah, demon tree. Evil being just can't catch me. I see him moving on the lawn. The tree man. Evil go, evil be. Green Noah, come to me. Anything wrong, ma'am? Master Tozman. What's happened? Has anything been struck in the storm? Green Noah! Green Noah is gone! Oh, Tolly! Oh. He's fallen! I got him, ma'am! I'll carry him in! Will he be all right, Boggus? He's had a fright, that's what it is. A rare fright, too, by the look of it. What did he mean about Green Noah? I'll go out and see. You'll be all right till I come back. Yes, yes, of course. Toby? It's all right, my darling. Toby? Vesta's calling you. I know. He called his loudest when old Noah was struck. I was just waiting for you to come to yourself again. Green Noah couldn't catch you, Tolly, could he? I must go to Vesta now. I was taking him some sugar. Hush, my dear. I wish I could see Feste. Perhaps Christmas Day is your lucky day. Perhaps you should try wearing Toby's clothes. I've never seen the light, ma'am. Boggis, what is the matter? Nothing burning now, but there has been. A tree's been struck. Old Noah it is. Oh. There's a charred stump lying on the edge of the lawn. How we could have got there, I just can't figure it. And that's not all. Go on. There's things moving. What things, Boggis? Oh, I wouldn't like to say, ma'am. Things that did not... Uh... Stone things. St. Christopher? We called him. I knew he'd come. So Green Noah is gone at last. You can saw him up tomorrow, Boggis, and we'll burn the wood on Christmas Day. I'll do the sawing all right, but I'd be scared to burn him. Too much like hellfire for me. Might burn the house down with his last breath. It sounds as if the last breath has already been singed out of him. Now then, Boggis, let me get you a drink, a little brandy. Uh, thank you, no, ma'am. I've been teetotaler all my days, and tonight I've seen things that should never be seen by those who don't drink. Now, <clears throat> I'll be getting along, if you'll excuse me. I hope the young master will be all right after a night's sleep. Thank you, Boggis. And I hope as how I am. Well, Tolly, we'd best get you to bed. Granny, will you change the name of the house back to Green Noah? No, I've come to like Green Noah better. We'll plant new trees. We'll have Noah and Mrs. Noah, one on each side of the floodgate, and I'll get Father Patrick to come and bless them. Granny, 
Daddy. What is it, my dear? Do you see them in the choir? Toby and Alexander? Yes, and Linnet. It is them, isn't it? Maybe. That does look like Alexander. And look, over there, St. Christopher. Oh. He's come to church on Christmas Eve, just as Linnet said he did. You do see him, don't you? It's very dark and shadowy, and my eyes don't see too well in this candlelight, but... It is. I'm sure it is. And there's Linnet's dog, Orlando, sitting at his feet. See? Watching Linnet. <laughs> and it's midnight now. It's Christmas. Yes. And in the morning, we'll see what Father Christmas has brought you. A tin shape like Noah's Ark. And what's inside? Biscuits! Oh! And we've got animals on, in white sugar. So they have. Oh, here's a hare. A squirrel. There's a deer, too. And look, a peacock. This one's got a fish on it. And there's an owl. And a horse. Feste. Of course. <laughs> and what else did you have? A banana, an apple, and a tangerine, and a new flashlight from Bogus. What else? What's this down in the toe? A Christmas card. And what's on it? Two curly white china dogs with black faces. Like the ones over there on the chest of drawers. And? You've written something underneath. Their names are Wait and See. What does it mean, Granny? Wait and See. <laughs> <laughs> now then, it's time to get up and dressed. In Toby's clothes? Yes, if you want. Because Alexander said you should try wearing Toby's clothes. Then you should. Day. Are you there? Yes, of course he is. Look what I bought you today. What is it, boy? A nice juicy apple for my Christmas stocking. An apple? For you, Feste, on Christmas Day. Feste? Feste, at last! At last? Want your apple, do you? All right. Here you are, boy. Oh, first day. Let me put my arm round your neck. Oh, my wonderful first day. My, my golden, golden eagle. eagle. My, my powerful lotter. lotter. My, my wise horse. Stroke. What in heaven's name is going on here? Hello, Boggus. <laughs> What's that you've got on? I've never seen so many frills and ruffles and silver buttons. <laughs> These are my special Christmas clothes. Happy Christmas, Boggus. Happy Christmas, Master Toesland. Thank you for the flashlight. You're welcome. So you decided to try wearing Toby's clothes, did you? Yes, but they are a bit big for me. And you forgot your stockings. Aren't your feet cold? I was in the stables. And did Feste enjoy his apple? <laughs> yes. I've got a pocket full of field mice. Do you want to hold one? Can I keep it to tame? <laughs> yes. Keep it. <laughs> Come back and see me soon, won't you? 
Good morning again, bare feet. Happy Christmas. Do you like your toes blue with cold? <laughs> now that will be your Christmas present. Shut your eyes, Tolly. Come in, Boggis. Here we are, ma'am. Hold out both your arms, Tolly. All right, Boggis. <laughs> oh. Oh, it's a puppy. It's a real Orlando. Is he mine? He's yours from now on. And you can train him, like they do with those dogs in the circus that jump through hoops and such like. Oh, yes. Well, now, I'll be off to spend Christmas Day with my family. Thank you, Boggis, and a Merry Christmas. Happy Christmas, Mr. Boggis. Yeah, happy Christmas to both of you, and many more. Thank you. This has been a wonderful holiday, Granny. Do I have to go back to school next term? Oh, yes. But next term, you're going to go to the choir school here at Great Church. Granny! I think they may let you sing in the choir. How Alexander would have loved that. Oh, yes. If I'm at Great Church, does that mean I'll be able to spend all my holidays here? Of course. Oh, good, Tolly. And your father says in his Christmas letter... Yes? ...that he wants you to learn to ride. Oh, yes! <laughs> <laughs> in The Children of Green Know by Lucy M. Boston, Patricia Routledge was great-grandmother, Dominic Childs was Tolly, Gavin Muir was Mr. Boggis, Linnet was Jennifer Whelan, Alexander was Nicholas Holt, and Toby was played by Bobby Williams. Petronella was played by Elizabeth Bell, Mother was Gemma Saunders, and the organist was played by Tom George. Other parts were played by the company. The music was composed by the Fratelli brothers. The Children of Green No was dramatized for radio by Brian Sibley. The director was Marilyn Imrie.